Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Good morning. This morning we're going to read from Isaiah. It's Isaiah 6, 1 through 8. So Isaiah 6, 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to, the, to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called. And the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay. I want you to do something for a second. Um, look in this picture real quick and see if you can find the cat. Did you find it? Gotta look really close. It's a picture of a bulldozer in it. Yeah, but if you notice, it was a caterpillar bulldozer. A little Hello Cat thing on the back. And, and the neat thing about, uh, uh, you know, it, you know, a bulldozer, you know, you can have a lot of different kinds, right? There's a lot of people that make bull, a lot of companies make bulldozers out there. But a caterpillar is built a certain way. There's, there's a certain thing about it that makes it a caterpillar, makes it a cat. You know, it's, there's a lot of stuff internally, a lot of, you know, people behind it. There's, there's just something about it that makes it a cat that other ones are not. Um... So you could have a bunch of them out in the line doing work, a bunch out in the, you know, out in the construction site or, or wherever in a mine or something like that, and they could all be doing a lot of work. But, you know, you, you still, you could, you got to look, but it's like, well, how do you, if they're all, because a lot of them are the same color, right? So it's like, how do you spot it? How do you spot the cat in the midst of all the stuff, right? So, so I want you to, so, so, you know, you, you'd have to, uh, you know, especially if you took all the labels off of them, how would you do it? You know, if, if they didn't have any label of what uh, the manufacturer, how would you tell which one's the cat and which one's not? Yeah. Now, now think about this a second. If you had a bunch of people out uh, somewhere, let's say there was a place in a, some foreign country or something, Haiti or something like that. I remember a few years ago, there was a bunch of missions in, in Haiti, I think, it, when the uh, uh, had some bad earthquakes and stuff like that. And there's a lot of people pouring out all this uh, this effort to go over there and help people out. And you could see pictures of of people, like, in, in lines and, you know, helping people out and giving them stuff. So if you see all those people helping, uh, how can you spot the one that's doing God's work, like working for God, versus the ones that are doing humanitarian work. 
And, and so, so now you might be thinking, well, well, what's the difference? Humanitarianism, it's all good stuff, right? And that's true. It might be all good stuff, but there's a difference. <clears throat> Humanitarianism is going out and, and, and doing things that are good, right? For, for the benefit of people, of humans, humanitarianism. So it's, it's going out and doing good works that, that are things that it kind of helps society. <clears throat> but there's some people that, um, that might be doing that because they, it's a good thing to do, but some people might be doing that because God told them to go do that. Uh, and how do you, you know, you can't really spot that, can you? Because there's no labels on anybody. So you can't spot it. So, but the, one of the things about humanitarianism is if you just put forth, the, put forth the effort, you can go out and do good stuff. All right, you can do good stuff for people all the time. That's fine. Uh, but there's a difference between humanitarianism and, making some, and, and doing something because it's God-centric, like God is the center, uh, center of, of everything. Um, and there's really a couple things, things about it is, you know, you, you got to, you know, God has to call you to do that. God has to say, Hey, this one is something that, that you are responsible for. You're in your, this is yours, right? This is yours to do. And then the other thing is you have to submit to what God wants you to do. And, you know, they're, they're both tough, but that submission thing, I think, is one we have a hard time with, you know. And, and look, and so, and here's the thing. So, and just, I want you to be careful that you don't hear me saying or not saying or whatever. I'm not saying that you shouldn't do good stuff. Yeah, if you feel like you should do something good and it's a worthwhile effort and that kind of, do it. Do it all the time. But... You know, there's certain things that you will find in life where God has, is calling you to do something, to fulfill something that he needs done for whatever reason. We don't know, right? But he's actually calling you towards something or for some purpose. And, and you see this here with, uh, with Isaiah. This is when Isaiah was called. And, and, and there's... In, in this whole passage here, there's all kinds of stuff, you know, happening. There's, there's seraphim that, you know, God is there. And, and everything and everybody here, everybody and everything has a purpose. And it's a purpose that God is called in for. The, um, I mean, everything, the, uh, the seraphim, the seraphim are, are flying and praising God. Remember, the seraphim uh, flies down to Isaiah when Isaiah is saying, I'm a man of unclean lips, right? And the seraphim flies down, and he has a coal from the altar. So there's an altar there. And there's an altar there that, that have burning coals. So there's an altar. The altar has a purpose. The burning coals, they have a purpose, right? The and the seraphim flies to him with this burning coal, but he's holding it with a pair of tongs. There's tongs there to pick up this coal, and it's okay to pick up the coal with the tongs, right? And then he touches Isaiah's lips with the coal and says, your sins have been atoned for. So look at that. There's, there's things going on here. And uh, so all of that has a purpose. But then you have Isaiah sitting right there in, in the middle of everything. And he's saying, you know, I can't, you know, I, I see this happening, but, you know, woe is me because I'm a man of unclean lips. And I think a lot of times when, when we perceive, you know, a calling from God, that's, I think that's something that, that might keep us standing back a little bit. It's like, oh, no, I can't do this. I'm not good. I'm not good enough for this. 
how can I be good enough to go out and do something for God? I can't even, you know, hardly get out of bed right in the morning, you know, much less go do some kind of holy work. I mean, yeah, I'm not a, you know, and I think that's, that's a, uh, that's a thing that, that we kind of hold on to, right? Is, is we, we're very aware of our unworthiness. <laughs> uh, and, and a lot of times, because of we're aware of that, a lot of times we, we try to work ourselves out of it. Like we, we go out and practice doing good stuff to try to figure out, you know, get better or something. But if you notice, you always fall back in the same old routine. You fall back in the same old things that you had before, you know. Um, and it, but it was the same way for Isaiah, if you think about it. The seraphim touched his lips with a burning coal and said, your sins are atoned for. But that did not change who Isaiah was. Isaiah is still the same person, unclean lips, and lives in a land of unclean people. Lips of people with unclean lips. None of that changed. So really, if you think about it, the only thing that changed or what actually happened there is his sins were atoned for. Now, do you know anybody else's sins who are atoned for? I hope you raised your hand. Uh, ours are. You know, that happened through the grace and the glory of God through his son, Jesus. Our sins are atoned for. Now, <clears throat> Isaiah was absolutely aware of that. Some burning coals touched his lips and a seraphim said, while he was standing and looking at the throne, you know, the throne of God, a seraphim said, your sins are atoned for. Very aware of it. Um, you know, and it's, you know, people can say to us their sins are atoned for, but it's like, you know, we didn't, you know, coals didn't touch our lips and all that stuff, right? But <clears throat> look at how Isaiah behaved. Is when, when that happened, it was almost like a different, a different person emerged, even though Isaiah was the same, it's the same guy. But he had, he went from that, oh no, I'm a man of unclean lips. I've seen the king, the, you know, the, you know, basically I can't look, right? He went from that to God saying, who should we send out? And Isaiah boldly standing up there saying, hey, here am I, send me. Big drastic change. Very cool thing. So, but it was, it was, think about this. Isaiah's in a place where he thinks that it's over. I mean, I, I've seen the king, all the, the place is shaking when God speaks, all this stuff is going on and it's just beyond him. Yeah, he's, he's completely beyond himself. He's just done. <clears throat> and then a seraphim flies down with this thing and out of that, that gesture, and not even a gesture, but out of the, the true thing of saying, look, we're not worried about your unclean lips. We're not worried about who you live with or who you live around. Your sins are atoned for. Isaiah didn't do anything to deserve it. He did nothing. He's still the same man of unclean lips. But you know what? His sins were atoned for. Just like that. And he was absolutely aware of what happened. And because of that, God said, who should we send? He said, here am I. Send me. It's amazing. But it was the it was being aware of what God had done for him when he didn't deserve it. And he said, you know what? If God's going to do that for me, I'll go for you. If you're going to stick up for me like that, I'll go for you. If we become aware 
of what God has done for us and truly understand that our sins are atoned for, your sins are atoned for, even though you don't deserve it. When God calls you to do something, even though it's hard, and you might not know how, you might be saying, I don't know how to do this, I don't know what I'm doing or anything like that, don't worry about it. Just let God take you. Just submit. If you notice, Isaiah didn't know what he was signing up for. God didn't lay out the plan of what he was calling Isaiah to do. Isaiah just stepped up and said, I'll go. It's not for us to understand what God is calling us to do or how to do it or anything else. It's just, it's, it's just up for us to say, I'll go. And, and yeah, yes, that's harder, you know, done than me saying it, right? Um, but that's the reality. But it, that, that happens, and I think it can only happen when we can truly reflect on the, the realization that we are all people of unclean lips, just like Isaiah. And we live in a whole bunch of, with a whole bunch of people that are the exact same. And that is not going to change. It's okay. You can't earn your way out of being a sinner. So stop trying. That's not what it's about. And in the lineup of you doing good stuff with other people and stuff like that, you're still not going to have a label that lets people pick you out. Uh, whatever it is. You're not going to have a label that says called by God and other people won't have that label and other people will or whatever. That's not how that works. God will know what you're up to though. And you will know what you're up to because God will always check in with you. He'll, he's always there. If he was going to send you out somewhere, don't you think he's going to go with you? Don't you think his Holy Spirit is always going to be there guiding you and helping you along the way? Because that's who God is. He's not going to send you out into a land of, of unclean lit people and not be there with you. So it's, but we cannot do God's centric work, work that's, that God has called us to do without first being aware that we're a people of unclean lips. And also being aware of what God did for us all, even though we're those same people. Because it does something. It does something to you when you admit it, you realize it, and you understand, man, God, you did this for me. And I still don't deserve it. So that way, when God calls you up, you can boldly stand up there and say, here am I. Send me. It's okay to be unclean because the Lord of hosts, through his Son, made you the perfect, cleanest, be most beautiful thing that exists in his kingdom. So put that on. Wear it proudly. And go out in his work, not your own. Let's pray. Thank you, dear Lord, for taking care of us. Thank you so much for what you've done, and thank you for your son and all that he did for us. Thank you so much for the Holy Spirit, for the Holy Spirit guiding our ways, and thank you for loving us always. In the precious name of Christ, we pray. Amen.